Come on, bless the Lord. I know about prophet Thomas Malton is when all of us were introduced to his prophecies, which year? When did you hear prophet Malton? 2002. Remember the prophecies of 2002? When the nation was in great um, turmoil, we never knew what's going to happen. But this man of God with us today, we heard of when Kenya was in great difficulty, this man of God, he gave a prophecy that was so accurate about this nation. It is still online. It is still there. It is shaped this nation for good. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you have not interacted with it, please you are going to interact with it. I know after this ministry, you will desire to know what a privilege we got today to host such a mighty man of God, a prophet to the nations. He has a book. Please give me that book. That uh, Right here, come. Okay, let me get it from my own. Thank you. He has written books. He has got books that he has written. And uh, today I will request everybody before you leave, he will sign up, he will sign you this book of prophetic key to successful living. He will be signing it up for you after you buy it for a thousand. It will be at the uh, media desk. That's where it is. Please make sure you get this book. Uh, I desire that all of us interact with the ministry of Prophet Thomas. He's stirring the waters. He's stirring the waters. I can't even say the least. When the prophet come in the city, something must shift. And we've been praying for this city. And we love this city. And we love this nation. And this is the 47th county of the nation. The presence of the Holy Spirit is heavy here. Is Shama. So as I introduce our speaker today, the prophet of God, Dr. Prophet Manton the Fourth, there is something you need to understand why he's here. We didn't plan this. We, if we had planned it, it would have been the usual. Amen. But this is the Holy Ghost. Amen. This is the Holy Spirit. Amen. And by a city, it is lifted. It is built and established by a prophetic word. And the same prophetic word breaks down. So because we are here to hear this voice, as a vessel of God, as a channel of God, you cannot even describe Dr. Thomas Manton. He's been a season, I know it. And those who have been following and tracking, what God has been doing in this nation is the season now and it has come. For what God has kept for this nation to be revealed. Because this is in the heart of the city, the government, the business. All the seven mountains are realigned here at this gate. So what a wonderful day. Very apostolic, very prophetic. 24, 3, 24. It's aligned completely. This year of apostolic. The year of restoring back that fivefold. Apostles, prophet, the mighty evangelists, the teachers of the word, teaching, being restored. And the teach, then the pastors will have fun. They will enjoy it. To mend that the, I'm telling you, once the rest are line, the pastors will have fun. No more struggling, no more frustration. Because it's deeply rooted. The foundations are right. So today, as we usher in the man of God, you have just seen the eyes. 2000 was an opener for us. Some of us, we are in diaspora. We were there because we didn't want to be there. But we were forced to go there, out in America to the nation, so we can hear outside. So there is no corruption. We are outside looking from out what was happening to Kenya. But a voice of God through his servant, the, the, the prophet, Dr. Manton, in London, released a direction. A pointing figure what this nation needed. 
that we are to enter into a place to be ready to be launched and revived. Amen. That's why we are here today. It was that place in the midst of hopelessness. We had even to go to a deep pit and come out. You saw the president, Kibaki. Deep pit in a wheelchair, paralyzed. Prophetically just showing what everything was. Economy, leadership, in a pit and coming out. And rising from there, from a wheelchair being sworn and standing, and the economy shot to 8% growth. We are struggling to hit that digit. But it is going to come. Because God went to restore back. And then we will launch deep to our destiny as a springboard of revival. That's why God sends prophets in the city. That's why God sends prophets to the kings. Any king who does not align with the northerns and get is destruction. We need prophets to speak direction and life to a nation, to economy, to the body of Christ, to awaken to his rightful place. Dr. Manta, I'm going to ask her as I just give that little introduction. Go stay there. Go launch to the other counties. That's why we are here today as witnesses. It's life is recorded. You can test it. The spirit of God is spirit of truth. It doesn't lie. The spirit of prophecy is a prophecy of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is here. So this servant of God has been tested. He's been found everywhere. And what I was remembering yesterday, I was driving to Kangundo. From Nairobi, it said, Thika, Machakos, and Nairobi will be one. Twin cities, three pited. And we're like, how will it happen? Start driving even as you go. They are almost now coming one. Machakos, Nairobi. If you are going to Thika, there will be one. I remember that prophecy somewhere. I'm telling you, it's amazing. I was really going He's still con the city is still growing and this rich coma rock is almost now in Kangundo. It will come to pass. Amen. Nairobi, it will be you, you say UN headquarters is already there, United Nations, but this is the New York. You see, this is the New York, the Apple. Everything in Africa must be realigned from here. So I, I'm just introducing because this is affirmation of what he has prophesied. So not to waste time and I shall the servant of God Dr. Prophet Manton the fourth from United States of America sent to Africa through Nairobi, Kenya welcome servant of God and speak the oracles. Hallelujah. Speak the oracles. Speak the oracles. Hallelujah. Thank you, my bishop friend. Can we lift our hands to the Lord? I'm excited, thrilled to be here. The Lord's going to do something great. Just pray in the Holy Ghost for a minute right now. I feel the presence of the Lord falling here. It's already happening. Mabranshala. And Salasheke Esu Uche Ayaka Vara Tala Aseka Shana Mose Mansa Namanse Kalahashi Tohu Prashaka Abu Rekete E Baraka Sokonanche Woo Ha 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 Kasakala Kasselo Shokoya Marandere Proshe Kali Eto Saban Duroko Sahaya it feels good to pray here. It feels good to pray here. Father, let the fire of heaven come upon your vessels. Those that you've chosen to speak in the coming days and years. Let an anointing fall to commission new servants, new vessels. Even in this place, even in the city, even in this house. Even across the country, across the nations of East Africa. And across all of Africa, from east to west, from south to north. And out to the nations of the world, we thank you, Lord, for raising up. I hear the Lord saying this so strong. New vessels. Just a little bit softer on the music, but keep playing. But keep playing, keep playing, keep playing, but a little bit softer. Father, I thank you for the touch 
a fire. <laughs> you know, I see the Lord like looking to and fro over all the people of the earth for the ones whose heart is perfect toward him. God said he can find you. Even this baby coming up, walking around here with her hand up. Lord, touch her. Little precious baby. She's, she must be like a year and a half. Maybe she's just starting to walk and she's already walking to the altar. Father, you're going to ordain people. <laughs> Commission them as you did me. And, and as, the, as the servant of God says, such as I have... Give I unto thee in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise and walk. Father, I thank you as you appeared to me in September of 1986. You may be seated. And you spoke to me. The whole thank you choir, thank you. God bless you. Love you guys. Can we give them a hand clap? All right. Get just a short one. Let's give a bigger one for our bishop here. Come on now. Can you give the Lord a shout for the servant of God, for the apostle, Apostle Lawrence and his wife. Come on, give him another hand clap. Come on, come on. All right. And one for my bishop friend, Bishop Andrew. Come on. Some of my team is here. God bless you all. Amen. But the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me. And I never tell this. I don't know why. I, maybe I'm feeling a little bit loose in the Holy Ghost. Is that good? Is that good? That means I'm in a good place with good people. Sometimes you don't know what can, you can share. Because sometimes the creature of the night is the man sitting on the front row. <laughs> in some places. Eh? But someone say, not here. This is a good house. Lift your hands. You're in the right place. Amen. You know, when you're in a good place, you just feel free. We were in the office downstairs, and the Lord had me begin to prophesy uh, before we came up. And I just felt the spirit of liberation. Lift your hands. You're going to be liberated today from everything that's held you back, everything that's kept you poor, everything that's kept you stuck, everything that's kept you stressed. I break it in Jesus' name by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the blood of Jesus and the word of God. I was in New York City. In my house. I was an executive in New York. I was a bodybuilder. And I was a rock singer. Thus the hair remained. The muscles are still there too. Though I'm not in the gym all the time like Arnold, you know. The Terminator, I'll be back. I'm not there all the time, but the, the muscle memory is still there. And I was a highly paid executive in New York City. And uh, I even worked with the government also. And the Lord Jesus Christ came from heaven. My whole house disappeared. And he stood in front of me and the, he came with the angels and like everything was erased. I could see the nations of the world. I could see the kingdoms of the world. I could no longer see my house where I was. And I was sitting on the side of the furniture somewhere. And I just tried to stand up. The presence of God was so, so strong. And the Lord himself came. I can tell you how he looked. I can tell you how, how his eyes looked, his face looked. What color were the colors of his garment? His garment was the most beautiful crimson red and the most royal deepest blue, and the most glistening white, even not from this world, all together in a seamless garment of three colors, red, white, and blue. Now, funny enough, America has taken the flag to be the red, white, and blue. I wonder if they got a good reference start for that. I mean, probably so. I just thought of that now, but hey. And America is the leader of the world, yes? And now the devil is trying to take America down, but I'm praying for America that it doesn't go down, that it goes up. Come on, somebody. Something, what has happened needs to turn around. How many know what happened in Kenya in years past is being turned around? How many know what's happening in nations that evildoers did and Lucifer's friends did, the Luciferians did, is being turned around? Say hallelujah. So the Lord came, uh, stood in front of me. I had just gotten saved. 
okay? And I didn't know anything about Christianity. By the way, I'm the first person, I'm the first one, Thomas Manton IV, myself. The reason I use fourth is because my dad was Thomas, my grandfather was Thomas from Ireland, and his, his father was Thomas. So it's Thomas, 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 Thomas. That's why I use the fourth. Amen. But uh, and my father was a great political leader in America. He was, the, he was the boss of New York City for 30 years. My father was the one that called the shots in New York, Thomas J. Manton. And now he's in heaven. Lift your hands because I led him to the Lord. <laughs> In my whole family, on either side, my mother's or my father's, there was nobody that we ever knew of that was born again, ever, in the bloodlines, in any history of the family line. So when the Lord came to me, I had gone to a health food store to get uh, some bodybuilding supplements, you know, for my routine, and they started to witness to me, and I got really mad. I said, what are you, religious? What are you talking to me about this? I... I had some choice things to say, maybe some things I can't say in church. Say praise the Lord. And sure enough, the Holy Spirit was, was drawing me, and then I got saved miraculously. I don't have time to go through the whole testimony, but a month later or so, uh, some weeks later, I started having visitations after I got filled with the Holy Spirit. I didn't know what was happening. So Jesus Christ himself, not a church, not a pastor, not a leader, the Lord himself came from heaven and stood in my house and before me, and as I stood up to honor him, you know, it happened so fast, everything had disappeared and I was seeing the whole world and the whole universe out in front of me. It, it was astounding. I can't I hardly describe it even in, in English or any language in the, in the natural. But, uh, and the Lord said, my son Thomas, I am commissioning and ordaining you to be my prophet to the nations. At the time, I didn't even know what that was. I had not been to church. When I got saved, people said, well, you have to go to church. I said, no, I don't. I'll go if I want to go. What are you telling me I have to go to church? What church? When I was 13 years old, we grew up Catholic. I decided, ah, this church business, I... I walked away. I said, I'll never go to a church. So I had a, God had to deal with me. And God put me in, in a training with a word of faith pastor. And my father bought a satellite dish that cost a lot of money at the time. And the technology had just come out. This was in 1986. And, <laughs> and, and we get beamed in all of the Christian networks. And I, I got schooled. Right there, I had my own Bible school in my living room in front of the television from day one. And I started to prophesy after the Lord laid his hands on me there. I had the gift. I mean, I could prophesy to people. I don't even know. I didn't have a reference point. I see things. I get words of knowledge. And people were astounded. They said, you just got saved. How are you walking in this? I started to preach right away. Then I had an interesting experience Ten years later, in 1996, uh, Apostle Lester Sumrall, Dr. Lester Sumrall, led a, uh, 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 a group to Israel. And funny enough, he just went to heaven right before we were to go. He left. And uh, so we had to go ourselves. In February of 97, I went to Israel. And the Lord began our international ministry there. We've... I have stood, my feet have stood on all six continents of the world. Now I think we're in about 32 countries I've been to. That's not many, but that's a few. We have many more to go to. And that stupid lockdown nonsense, you know, caused a lot of uh, disruption because we would have been probably to 45 nations by now. But uh, that's coming up. By the way, God has a private jet for me to take me to cities of the world in the coming days. Someone lift your hands and say, praise the Lord. I'm just telling you some secrets. I, I feel loose in the Holy Ghost. Maybe I'll share some things I shouldn't say to everybody, okay? God has a... There's a bishop in Nairobi. His name is Samuel. He wrote me last night. And he's an aerodynamics engineer that works on private jets. And we were together in a conference at the KICC. I was speaking there, and... Uh, he spoke in this session. He said he had been in my meetings years ago. 
And I said, well, good to see you again. I don't remember when I saw you, but... And he, he shouted at me. He said, prophet, God has jet for you. You needed to travel. I said, thank you very much, sir. Thank you for the confirmation. To do what? To go boom, boom, city after city. Can I tell you the evil that is upon the earth and is going to increase in these days is no match for what God's going to do. Lift your hands. Whatever the devil has tried to do against your life is no match. Whatever you suffered, whatever price you paid to suffer for Jesus, to walk with him and keep listening to him is nothing to be compared with the reward and the blessing that's coming. For the blessing of the Lord makes me rich and adds no sorrow, Proverbs 10.22 says. So this journey of the supernatural began, and I feel right now, and I've, I've never really said this in any pulpit lately that I can remember. I've, I've shared it over the years a few times, but I just feel right now, everybody lift your hands right now. There's a, a new consecration happening this week, and I said it in the office downstairs. It has nothing to do with this is resurrection week or it's the end of March and Easter, as you call Easter, which is a pagan term. I don't use it. I like to say resurrection because it's the resurrection. So I don't use the term Easter. But it doesn't matter if it's June or October or March or December. God is God every day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. They are his days. And today's his day. I like the 2424. Thank you, Bishop. It's wonderful. And three is the number of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. <laughs> so this is the 24th of the third month in the 24th year of the new millennium. Lift your hands. It's meaningful. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But God is God every day. So I feel like the Lord is going to use us to start to commission some new disciples and some people to really run with the fire that the Lord's put in being. Lift your hands. He hasn't reserved the, the least for last. He's reserved the best for last. As the scripture said, in Cana of Galilee, the first miracle, Jesus' mama said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. And they said, bring me the best. Then when he needed a uh, a donkey to ride on down the procession when they were going to shout Hosanna. He said, bring me a colt on which never a man sat. I need a new one. God is going to begin to ordain people to run with fire. Lift your hands. I know I'm saying that because there's somebody watching online or you're going to see this message later. And there are people here in this church right now this Sunday morning, that the Lord is going to commission you with fire. And your surroundings will change for you as they did for me. I didn't stay in New York City. The Lord took me out of New York. I went to the nations of the world. From Israel, Jerusalem, I birthed the international ministry on February 7th of 1997. I was there with my friend, Dr. Mike Murdoch. In fact, I just found a picture. I'll post it on my Facebook page that y'all can see it, you know. And uh, we, we didn't stay in one place. And the Lord just had me prophesying to your, your, your bishop, your leader here, your, your apostle here, Pastor Lawrence, that, you know, you, you can't stay in one place. It's time to move. There's new doors. There's new favor. There's new things. And a lot of people are feeling like, how many ever felt like you're stuck? You're just stuck in one thing. And you, you, there's more to life. There's more to move in. Lift your hands. I declare those doors will fly open for you in Jesus' name. People in business, you need to be blessed. Amen? People in life, you need to be blessed. If you're going to have a ministry, you need to be blessed. So anyway, I, I have a lot of things here. I have a few. These are a few of the prophecies. If I showed you, look at the thickness of the pages. Can you see? This is just a few of the written prophecies that Bishop Andrew was referring to. And I'm putting these into a book. I have other books. Uh, <clears throat> one really that sold out. We're going to reprint the 66 prophecies for Kenya. They've all come to pass and some were in motion. And I felt the Lord telling me to uh, re-release that. I have a book I wrote on the Office of the Prophet. Supernatural Operations of Spiritual Conquest through the Office of the Prophet. 
It's a long title, but I couldn't shorten it because that's really what it is. This is a full color book. We're going to reproduce this uh, digitally. Amen. The Laws of Success, a new edition of that is coming out. The Benefits of Excellence, you need to walk in excellence. It'll help you. Amen. The Focus Factor, the only reason men fail is because of broken focus. If you can focus on something that you really need to be doing, you will succeed. Say a big amen. And the grace that you honor is the grace that you receive from. The wisdom that you celebrate is the wisdom you receive from. The anointing you respect is the anointing you attract. The anointing you partake of is the anointing that will work for you. And a lot of people don't get blessed because they don't focus enough. They don't zoom in. They don't zero in on the thing and say, that's a blessing. That's power. I want that. <clears throat> it's okay to do that. Another book called Success Strategies. These are all sold out. They're going to reprint. Now, what I have today is this great book, Prophetic Keys to Successful Living. It's not about prophecy, although there are, there's a subsection about prophecy and prophetic prayer. This is an A to Z on success. And the foreword was written by a man you know, the illustrious Archbishop Harrison K. Nanga. Have you heard of him? Amen. And he published this book for me. And he also, I'll tell a secret, he also paid for it because he loves me so much. He wrote three pages in the foreword about me. If you want to know more about me, listen to the Archbishop. He's the le a leading voice in Kenya now. And uh, all that we prophesied when I preached in his church oh, nearly 10 times last year. And, you know, he doesn't really invite many people to his pulpit. Uh, he's flowing all the time himself, but he loves me. And I preached for him nine or ten times last year. And everything the Lord said there is coming to pass. Lift your hands. Everything today I'm speaking here will come to pass. You know a prophet by the fruits of, of what he says that it actually happens. Amen? So I'll be at the back table back there somewhere. At the end, you can come and see me. I'll sign a copy and speak a blessing over you. If you want to get the book, I like to sew. I don't consider that people buy things. I'm, I'm, I'm good at sales. I used to do it years ago before I got saved. I'm good at it, but I'm not a salesman. I'm not a mere businessman. I'm a prophet to the nations of the world. Lift, lift your hands. I'm higher than any prime minister. I'm higher than the president. If you offer me a government position, I couldn't take it. And I don't work for anybody. Since that day... When the Lord appeared to me, when I began to go, before I went to Israel to dedicate the international ministry, which I found out there, the Lord visited me there, and a, a long story anyway, and uh, great visitations we had there in Jerusalem, and one thing the Lord had me do is make a vow before heaven that I will never work for a man or organization in my entire life again. Lift your hands. Can you, you know, that's a hard thing. If someone offers me a position, I can't take it. If someone wants to take me on, into their thing, I can't do it. Now, I have relationships with a lot of people. But this calling a fire from heaven is, has a life of its own. And that's what you really need to get to. I mean, you need to get to that. Lift your hands. Say, Father, visit me. When that happens for you, it doesn't matter who disappoints you. It doesn't matter what goes on. And I have a, a free gift. I have a free gift. Yeah, and it's the first time I'm doing this today, funny enough, because I, I have a web developer who just helped me with uh, some revamping my website, thomasmanton.com. You could write that down or type it in your phone. T-H-O, do it right now, T-H-O-M-A-S. M-A-N-T-O-N, Thomas Manton, dot com, C-O-M. And on there you'll see a form that says sign up for our free e-news. And when you do, it'll, it should send you back uh, a teaching I did called The Twelve Laws of Success. It'll really bless you. And that's an excerpt from this book, uh, <clears throat> The Laws of Success, which is going to reprint so I have, I, I'm saying this for a reason. I have a lot of material. You know, God sent his son, but he left his book. Hello? How many have this book right here? The Holy Bible. This is, by the way, this is the bestseller of all time. 
So go on to the website, okay? Thomasmanton.com. You got it? You need a second? Wave if you got it. Wave to me if you heard me. You got it? Thomasmanton.com. And just tap on the box there, and you can get my free e-news. And I'd love everybody to get a copy of this. We have several copies. You can come back and see me. I'll pray for you and sign this and write a special prayer inside the, uh, inside the book for you and sign it for you. Amen? Korababa shaka. Shalahai tsukonde In 2002, I was in London, England, as was mentioned, in Hertfordshire, England, outside of London, North, North London. On December 13th, 2002, it was a Friday, about 1.30 in the afternoon, and the Lord spoke to me and said, son, get your recorder. At the time, we didn't use digital. We didn't have cell phones back then. This is 22 years ago, okay? And uh, I, we used tapes at the time, cassette tapes. So I popped in a new 90-minute cassette tape, and I spoke for about 24 or 25 minutes. And I had it transcribed, and uh, here it is. And it's five pages long in a Word document, A4. And this prophecy right here circulated throughout the nation of Kenya. I think millions of people literally saw it. The print shops in town here were happy. They loved me from far. I wasn't here. I was in London. I wasn't in Kenya. They were like, this guy, he's making us money. We love him. People were coming. I've met people, even Archbishop Harrison Nanga has his copy of this from then. I've met people, they carried it in their bag for years when I came back in 2007. This is 2002. And the Lord said, why Kibaki would be the... The new president, amen, after a 24-year dictatorship, and the Lord says, I'm changing the seasons in Kenya. By the way, I prophesied that in KICC. Uh, a lot of people don't know about this. In June of 2000, we had a big meeting, like 10,000 people showed up over there. Someone say over there. You know what KICC is? Go like that. Is it that way? Is this way? Oh, this is more downtown. I can even feel the spirit. That's, that's down, down, Ruturi. If you're Kukuyu, you say Ruturi. Ruturi Avenue. Yeah, I, I, I like it better this way, I think. Okay, that way, KICC. I laid my hands on about 6,000 people <clears throat> after I prophesied on the platform for about an hour. And the visitation of heaven came and said, I'm going to form a new Kenya, a new government. Amen, all of that. And my hands, after praying for all the people, were blood red. Like, like red. Like more red than this, than, than my red jacket. Amen. For hours, to the next day, my hands were numb. I had no feeling in my hands. All I could feel was fire. And every single one of those, they estimated it was about 6,000 people plus. Every single one of them fell on the floor under the power of God. And God then began to build a new thing. The government that was existing then began to, you know, a year later it was done and they called for a new election. And the Lord spoke to me while I was in London and said, why Kabaki is the man I've ordained to come in and start to build something new? How many know from 2002, God even healed him. The devil tried to kill him. Do you know that the, 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 the managing director of Cooperative Bank, his name is Gideon. You know Co-op Bank? Hello? Are you understanding my perfect English? Huh? Look at your neighbor and say, I do speak English. Please, please. Too much Swahili. Too much Swahili. I rebuke it. Too much Swahili. You go on online service. I'm like, hey, I don't understand nothing except Jumbo. Hallelujah. Buona Safiwe. Yesu ni buona. Mungu ni muema. I could say that. Gioni, Jema, Upadikiwe, hallelujah. And a few others, but too much Swahili. The Brits are not here anymore. You don't have to hide. Speak the English. By the way, the whole world speaks English. If you want to be a voice to the world, you better speak English. 
Hallelujah. If you only speak Swahili, you only have two and a half countries. Two and three quarters. You have Kenya, Tanzania, a little bit of Congo, maybe a little bit of Zambia, and that's it. Hmm? You go to the world speaking in like Swahili, haha, <laughs> people look at you like, what? I told some Nigerian friends, I said, try to lose the accent a little bit. Tone it, get more clear. The more clear you speak, the more people can hear you. That's a challenge to all the preachers that are going to come up in the world. You want to have a good English uh, skill because you'll reach the whole world. Lift your hand and say, Lord, be it unto me in Jesus' name. That never goes over well. People fight that. I feel like a fight in the spirit every time I say that. But too bad, the devil is stupid, and so are his friends. Lift your hands. Praise the Lord. How many know Jesus and his friends are brilliant? How many know Jesus and his friends want to reach the whole world with the gospel? So, and there are many others. The last day of the campaign in 2007. No, sorry, it was 2013. Remember the, remember the talk in 2012? Everybody says, What's God saying about 2012? I said, nothing. They looked at me like, what? You, you're the prophet who spoke about the elections. I didn't hear nothing, so I said nothing. Little did we know, we found out later, that the election was not going to be in 2012. It actually was postponed to 2013. So every person that said, thus saith the Lord, 2012 was wrong. You better be careful who you listen to. People walking around talking about judgment is coming to Kenya because of the sins. I said, no, judgment is not coming to Kenya. Kenya is a beautiful land that God made. Hello? With the lions and the zebras and the giraffes and the water buffaloes and the hyenas and Twiga and Dovus, the elephants. It's a beautiful place. And the beautiful people that he made. It's the devil that did evil things. So judgment is not coming to Jesus' friends. Judgment will only come to the devil's friends. Hello? This is the day and I prophesy. And I said this from the beginning of the year. The word of the Lord for 2024 is this. The righteous will flourish, but the wicked will be cut down. The days of corruption in your land are going to begin to come to an end. God's going to begin to expose it more and more. And the Lord says, don't complain about... People are complaining about the economy and the new government. and Get past that and begin to pray and prophesy. Get past that and begin to pray and prophesy, even over yourself. Can I tell you, if you're made rich in your own house, what do you care about what other people are doing? Lift your hand and say, I'm going to be rich myself. Say, I'm going to be blessed myself. And this is going to be the day when we have to build our own houses. We have to build our houses. We have to build our organizations. We have to build our lives, amen, to become great habitations of God. We need to build literally empires within the empire. Don't be scared of the word. The church is the only place where they're scared of money. They're scared of wealth. They're scared of business. They're scared of aggressive thinking. Who told you that? It was the devil, not Jesus. Lift your hands. I rebuke all that out of the church world. You're scared to talk about success and biblical economics and finance and money and treasure. Money's good. I said money's good. In Ecclesiastes 2.26, Solomon was led to say, God gives the job of the sinner to the sinner to gather and collect things to then give over to the one who's good before God. And Ecclesiastes 5 says, wealth is the gift of God. In Deuteronomy 8.18, the Lord says, I am the Lord thy God that gives you power to get wealth. Isaiah 45, 2 and 3 says, and 4 said, I'll give you treasures of darkness, of hidden places, all kinds of sources I'll give you. And then the fourth verse said, and the fifth verse, by this you'll know that I'm the Lord your God who even calls you by your own name. How? By doing what happened in the verse before. To give you treasures. Lift your hands and say, there's treasures for me. There's blessings for me. There are great things for me. God doesn't want you poor and broke. People don't want to talk about against prosperity. Rebuke them and run away. Lift your hands. Prosperity is not a gospel. There's only one gospel. 
Genesis to Revelation. <laughs> and in every chapter almost, in almost every chapter, yeah, really, in every book, there are promises of financial blessing for the righteous. Take your Bible, if you have it, or your phone, and just hold it up before God. Say, Lord, I believe what you said. I believe what's in your word. This great book with 40 authors over 1,600 years wrote similar things, and they weren't even alive in the same days. They wrote it by the Holy Ghost. 49% of the Bible is supernatural. Prophecy, revealed things, angelic visitations, the word of the Lord coming. is a, It's almost half the book. Amen. Uh, 1,189 chapters, about, about 865,000 words, and thousands of promises of blessing. Lift your hands. There's another thing. 331 times in the Bible was the concept of correct decision making will, will cause my destiny to come to pass. Your, your correct decisions will cause your destiny to happen. In Jeremiah 29, 11, the Lord said, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. How many know poverty is a curse, but prosperity is a blessing? So don't be afraid of the word. Get used to it. Hello? Hello? Hi. Are you there? You see the demons, they, 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 they start to... Move when you talk about this. Yeah, I don't care about you, you stupid devil. Go out the window from where you came. Get out. Go, go that way. Go to Dooley Avenue and try to shop for some electronics. And then come back and tell me the best deal. Use the devil. How many of the devil has only one place? Look at me right here with my Italian shoes. How many of the devil only has one place? Where is it? Hmm? Put your foot down. Don't ever forget it. He's not in you. He's not above your head. He's not in your atmosphere. One thing you need to do is look for blessing blockers and remove them from your life. People are two th one of two things. They're either a blessing to you or they're a hindrance to you. They're blocking your flow or they're enhancing your flow. And this is the time where God wants, and the Lord spoke about this prophetically downstairs in the office. He wants us to clean to see everybody that's around us and create a beautiful habitation and i want to tell you the day of competition in the church has to end i prophesy i prophesy now if people want some people want to act stupid and they want to continue with the ornery self-serving competitive evil ways they're not of that's not of god to act like that is not the fruits of the spirit it's the fruits of the devil can you say amen if the devil has fruit i don't know any fruit he has is rotten Lift your hands and say, God has good people. This is the day when you want to align yourself, realign yourself. Align yourself with beautiful people, righteous people, people that are pure, people that are full of God, people that are happy about your success, which are very few sometimes. Some people, they don't want to see you succeed. They don't want to see you on the platform. They don't want to see you being blessed. They don't want to see you being made rich. Because it, it, somehow it diminishes them. No, I'll tell you this, a principle of the kingdom, when everybody succeeds, we all succeed. Remember the Bible says when one in the, one in the body is hurting, amen, it affects the whole body. Is everybody the eye? No. Is everybody the ear? No. Is everybody the hand? Is everybody the internal organs? Is everybody the feet? No. Every, every joint supplies, the Bible says, every place in the Bible. We see principles about how God wants to bless. Let me give you one. Psalm 133 said there's unity that comes when the oil comes upon the head of Aaron. It runs down his head, down the beard, unto the garments, unto the body. And then he said there's unity there. Where there's unity, God said right there, God spoke. and said, I command my blessing there. If you're not being blessed enough, there's something that needs to be moved out of your way. Lift your hands. I just helped you right there. If, the, if you're not being blessed enough, your vision's not being fulfilled, there's something blocking your progress. And the devil is a master at sending people in and disguising them as something they're not. I never saw a place like Nairobi, Kenya, 
full of con artists, liars, and thieves. I never saw a place. I made this testimony, and I hate to tell you this. Well, maybe I love to tell you it. I don't know. But I, I made this statement, and some people didn't understand it too well. I said, in my entire life on earth, and by the way, I'll give you a hint about how, many, how long I've been around. I'm younger than Methuselah. He lived to 969, I won't tell you. And I'm a little bit more than a millennial, which started at 2,024 years ago. I'm in between somewhere, but I won't tell you exactly where. But I said in my entire life on earth, and my days on the earth have been many, I said I've never seen evil like I've seen in Nairobi, Kenya. Lift your hands. I prophesy it's changing. I said I've never seen evil. I've never seen evil in the church. Even in the church, what you call by the name of Jesus Christ, evildoers and wicked people. What's up with that? That needs to be rooted out. Last election, you know, people can complain about the government issues. You had two choices. You only had two. And I pray for 27. You know, some people are trying to come up and say uh, they want to run. I'm like, you? Oh, please. Please. You want to ruin Kenya? Kenya's been ruined enough. Lift your hands. Even in America. You had a good choice there, by the way, and he's running again. And I pray that he can take it back. Hallelujah. I'll speak in code here. DJT is our, his initials. His name uh, rhymes with jump. Mr. Donald. Praise the Lord. He's a businessman. He's a progressive thinker. He's a, he's a beautiful. He's a, he, and he loves God. He's given his life to God. Lift your hands. You want to look for the man that's born again. Even if, they're, if they lift their hands to Jesus and kneel down and say, I accept Jesus as my Savior. That's better than another person. Even though there are issues to be dealt with. So regarding the economy, regarding the government issues now, regarding all this is going on, something seemed distasteful. Amen. Pray past it and get yourself blessed. Lift your hands. Don't worry about now nah, all these, I don't want to talk. The new taxes and new fees and increased uh, cost of living and all that. It's it's it seems uh devastating to some people, but get past it. Lift your hands. Work on yourself. There's a principle in the Song of Solomon, chapter 1. There was a woman there. I think that she's the one that was dark and lovely, the lovely lady there. She said, I have built... Hey. Oh. Okay, baby. I have built and take care of the vineyards of others, but my own vineyard I've not kept. Lift your hands. It's time to care about your own vineyard. That doesn't mean, you know, I got to go start my own church. Who even wants you to preach to them? Who are you? Did the Lord call you first? If the Lord called you first, you're responsible to fulfill his will. Regardless of what man thinks about it. Regardless of what even you think about it. The commission to the ministry, Ephesians 4, 11, I gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the work of the ministry, for the edifying the body of Christ and the perfecting of the saints. Amen. That we no longer be like children tossed to and fro, but we're raised up into the stature of Christ. Uh, that job to the fivefold, the five offices is very powerful. If the Lord's called you the five offices, you're done. You're done. You gotta, you're responsible. It's over for you. You don't have your own life anymore. If the Lord decided to call you, are you going to get to heaven later on and say, Lord, I, uh, I was doing my own thing. The Lord says, get, get away from me. Now, I, I don't like the scripture in Matthew 7 that talks about, that says, I, I never knew you. I thought, but didn't, we, didn't people even know him at all? But, he's, but let's focus on the other part. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Lift your hands. Say, that's not going to be me. Say, I'm going to consecrate myself to God. Give myself to him again today in a new way, even greater than before. And everything he's ordained for me is going to be fulfilled. And I'm going to be his happy, royal, loyal servant forever. In Jesus' name. Amen. Today's Sunday on Wednesday morning. 
I had a visitation from the Lord. It happens to me almost every morning. The Lord speaks to me something every day. You say the Lord talks to you every day? Yeah, he does. I don't know about you or anybody else, but I'll tell you my own testimony. He talks to me every single day. He speaks through me every single day. He does things for me, to me, through me every single day. But Wednesday morning, I just fell into a realm of prayer. And I began to give myself back to God. Like I haven't given myself to him enough. Yeah, I have. But I thought, Lord, I'm done. I take another step of consecration to you. I give you my life. Whatever you want to do with it, have your way. I'm done. I abdicate the throne. I don't sit on my own throne. I sit on yours. Whatever it is you want, possess me. Fill me to overflowing. One of the greatest revivals that ever happened in America happened in the city of Daytona Beach, Florida, 1998. They put me in a beautiful hotel suite when I arrived there. I was speaking in a conference one day. And what happened is a revival went on for a few months after the, after the conference. You know that's God. It wasn't scheduled. But before I went out to speak, I saw myself in the mirror. And I said this. I said, Lord, I pointed at myself. I said, kill him. Kill Thomas. And you come and reside in me. And while I was standing, I saw the Holy Spirit, the reflection in the mirror, standing behind me. And as I said that, his presence came over my head and my shoulders and just whoosh, went into me. I went out to speak in the conference and my assignment in the conference, I was given the title to speak on, a uh, funny title, called Finances in the End Time Church. What a title. How do you put them together? Anyway, there's a way to put it together. And I preached on that, the subject of finances in the end time church. The purpose of treasure, wealth, provisions, you know, all that. So it was unrelated to revival or spiritual visitation, really. Uh, kind of practical and a few other things. And at the end of the meeting, I said, everybody stand. Lift your hands. And the Lord had me declare, fire! And every single person in the place fell flat on the floor at one time. Lift your hands. Can it happen today in our churches? And there were a couple of guys on the back. They were hit by the anointing, but they were holding on to the wall. I was wondering if it was safe, but the choir was here. But they're a little bit smaller than me. But I hope I don't, I hope I don't end up in Tanzania. If I do, please rescue me. Okay. But anyway, they were like this. I said, you! I walked up. I waved my hand. They all went, Woo, boom. The sound man in the back screamed and fell back on his chair on his head. Now there's nobody standing in the place. I said, well, what do I do now? So I just went. And I sat down. And I just waited. And the glory was over the place so you could feel. And something amazing happened. Some fires had broken out in the area from the dryness of the land. The Lord said, I'm going to deal with the dryness of the land. And I was in a radio station, live on the air, and I said, God said it's going to begin to rain. Within 30 seconds, boom! Lightning hit the top of the building and shook the whole building where we were in the radio studio. It was in a church, big church. They had a radio studio there. And uh, I... And all of a sudden, within seconds, you started to hear on top of the roof, a torrential downpour of rain. It had never happened. And God sent the rain to put out the fires. If you study the news, look back at the end of May 1998, you'll see that the whole, that whole region of uh, eastern central Florida was on fire. So then the next day, or two days, a couple days later, President Bill Clinton flew in on Air Force One, and they managed to land him at the airport. The, ro the runway was short, but they managed to him to get there, and he began to declare the national emergency was over, all based on a prophetic word. Lift your hands. 
That's the kind of power God wants us to walk in. When Elijah said it will not be rain according to me, not rain according to my word, it happened. When the apostles spoke to Simon the sorcerer and said, you're finished. He was finished and he went blind from that day. Lift your hands. God doesn't want evil to prevail, but people, it's because people have no power. They don't have the power of God walking in them. The Lord said it ought not to be. Let's just have a praise vacation for five seconds and pray in the Holy Ghost. Let's just have a prayer vacation right now. Just pray in the Holy Ghost, everybody, just for a minute. Porababa, Ronte, Shalahaya. Pray for yourself. Pray for your family. Pray for your business life. Pray for God to make a habitation of himself in you, that you walk in power and glory. It's time for that. It's time for that right now. It's time for that right now. It's time for that right now. Karabosha Marantelahasha. Father, the rise of the supernatural church. I preached a message on this. I want to release this message. It's on video, I think, somewhere. The rise of the supernatural church. I did it some time ago. A few years back. The rise of the supernatural church will change anything. When Benny Hinn came, and I was there on the platform with my friend Archbishop Harrison Nanga, who was made the chairman of the whole event, because of the visitation that came when we were in the pulpit prophesying over his church and his people. Lightning hit the building. People were falling through the, flying through the air. Archbishop said to me upstairs, Archbishop Harrison Anga said to me upstairs in his office after, the, after I was preaching. He said, someone was talking about power. He said, he opened his mouth right. He said, Prophet Manton, Thomas, he's carrying power. He says, our people, they were flying everywhere. He looked at me with his eyes blazing like fire. He said, I was watching people. He said, it looks like they couldn't even hear what was happening. They were flying through the air and hitting the floor and rolling around. The visitation of heaven happened. When does that happen? It doesn't happen often enough. But God needs a yielded vessel. Pray for yourself right now. Let's pray. I have one scripture, two scriptures. I'm just going to make a mention of them. I'm not going to preach them, but I'm going to mention them. The Lord gave me two verses for you. For the city, for the nation, not just for you. Because something new is going to change. But it's only going to happen by the visitation of heaven. When the visitation <laughs> becomes a habitation. When the visitation, I want to say it again, becomes a habitation. And it doesn't leak out. You got to watch what makes it leak out. Stress, lack, wrong people, wrong environment, all of this. You need to look at those things and develop your world, your inner world, to be a world as a sanctuary of the Holy Ghost. Like Psalm 91 said, the secret place of the Most High. What is the secret place? I asked the Lord. He said, it's being close to me, being in my hand. My hand is with you. That's the secret place. And he said, when you're there, no evil shall be able to touch you. Some people look at us and look at others and say, how did they make it? Can I tell you, I got, I got news for the devil and his ugly friends. I said I have news for the devil and his ugly friends. If you think we've made it to some level, you haven't seen anything yet. Lift your hands. <laughs> you haven't seen anything yet. This is little compared to what's going to happen next. Karabasha, tarabasha. Shalabahata, the visitation of God is what we need. When was the time when you sit in the presence of the Lord and his tangible presence comes, like we see in 2 Chronicles 5.13, that the priests, the Levites, and the priests, and the people there, they couldn't stand to minister because the glory cloud had filled the house. What we call the Shekinah. Is Shekinah a church word? Oh, the Shekinah. Oh, Rehoboth. Oh, Ebenezer. Oh. Stop with the terminology and manifest it. 
Can I tell you, confession is good, but possession is better. And you being alive is good, but being possessed by the Holy Ghost is better. I preached on this for many years. People get a little bit nervous sometimes. You talk about the word possessed. People think that that means possessed by the devil. Well, if he could possess a vessel, where did he learn it from? If the devil can possess anybody, how many know God can possess us more? Lift your hands. You want to ask God to lift your hands up. Some of you sitting here look at me like this. Lift your hands up. If you don't want it, it's okay. I don't know. I'm polite. Take it or leave it. Possessed by the Holy Ghost. That's a great prayer to pray. Look at yourself and say, Lawrence, what's your name, Mama? Margaret. Lawrence and Margaret. Andrew, our friend here. I like the red shirt. I have a nice suit, a red suit. Maybe when I come again, I'll wear my red suit and I'll match the protocol, guys. That's cool. I like it. Anybody? We should have a service. We wear red. It's indicative. It's in, uh, indicative of the blood of Jesus. That's all right. Last night I went to an event and uh, they said wear white and gold. An apostle friend of mine's birthday celebration did it at the Kempinski Hotel. Really a beautiful time. There's great people there. Really great. It was great. God used me to prophesy over him again and I preached in his church, in his conferences. But, uh, <clears throat> and I wore a different color. I showed him a picture, and I was in Abuja, Nigeria. I said, my white suit is in America. When Benny Hinn came, they asked him to wear his white suit. He wasn't going to. Thank God he brought one with him. He had one with him. He was <laughs> organized. Benny Hinn is very organized, by the way. He's a very organized guy. We should, we should take after him a little bit more than we do. That meeting was good. It was good. I don't care what you think about people. The president and his wife got on their knees. That's a good thing. Lifted their hands. The anointing was on the platform. That's a good thing. If you had other people in government, I don't think they would do the same thing. Or if they did, just out of force, being forced. But is it really in their heart? When someone says, Lord, help me. I love you. That's a good thing. Because righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. But the time... The times are refreshing. Yeah, Lord. Acts 3.19. The times are refreshing. Come by the presence of the Lord. And he said, Every, men everywhere should repent. Let's do that right now, just while you're seated. Say this. According to 1 John 1 and 9. Let's repent of everything right now. Let's do it right now. I didn't do this years past, but the last couple of years, the Lord had me, brought me into this to bring the church. Like I said, I feel a bit loose in the Holy Ghost. I feel free here. This is a great place here. I'm happy to be here. Honored to be here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'll come again. I'll come again. Let's do something else. Let's do something else so we we don't have room for the people. We have to figure out where to have another venue. Have a citywide blow up. A blowout. A Holy Ghost explosion. I'm tired of men standing in the way of God. And they've done it in Kenya. But that, I prophesy also, is being broken in this day. Lift your hands. We're going to have free flows of the Holy Ghost with good people that can come together. Let's pray. 1 John 1 and 9. As you confess your sins before the Father, He will forgive you of all sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. 1 John 5, 14 and 15 says... When you ask things according to the will of God, he will grant those petitions to you of which you ask. Lift your hands. So according to the will of God, you see. Let me tell you what sin is. Sin is missing the mark. Sin is commission, but it's also omission. There's something you did that was wrong. We're going to pray in a second. And there's something you didn't do yet that you were supposed to do. That's a sin of omission. We're going to get it fixed right now. Everybody, I would tell you to stand, but I don't want to break the flow. i got to finish my message here. And we're running on time, time clock. So let me, let me pray for you while you're seated. Lift your hands up. Say, Lord, I confess all sin to you. Anything I've done that I shouldn't have done. 
and anything that I was supposed to do that I didn't do yet. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness right now for having those things in my life are sin unto you. But sin shall not have dominion over us. Sin shall not have dominion over me. Say it, sin shall not have any dominion over me. I'm walking in holiness. I'm walking in righteousness. I'm walking in perfection. Psalm 37, 37 said, Mark the perfect man, for the end of that man is peace. And say, Lord, whatever I've done wrong, forgive me. Whatever I've done to hurt another, please help me. Otherwise, hell, hell is waiting. Hell is waiting. <clears throat> hell is waiting. If you think every preacher is righteous and they're just going to go to heaven automatically by default, it's not true. If you think every person just by default is just going to get to heaven because God's a merciful God, no, you got part of the wrong gospel. You got it mixed up. And if you think a man that speaks about these things is rough, you should read the Bible. Look at Korah. Look at Ananias and Sapphira. Look at Achan. Look at the Pharaoh of Egypt and his and the riders on the horses of his men. They all died. Look at Simon the sorcerer in Acts chapter 6 or somewhere. He was struck blind and knocked out of his business. Look at the damsel that was a soothsayer. And Paul said, come out of her in the name of Jesus. And every, the whole business went defunct. God is a, look at Jesus when he whipped the money changers. And the wicked people in the houses in the temple. And he's not coming back as the lamb with the sheep on his shoulder. He's coming back as the rider on the horse with his sword drawn. Hello? He's the amen, the faithful, and the true. He's the king of kings and the lord of lords. He's coming back to redeem us. But the earth is going to be judged. You don't want to be in that place. Some people think they can do whatever they want. And God is still a merciful God to them. They are wrong. God blesses the righteous. He makes no covenants with the wicked. He has no blessing for the rebel. Except to say, repent and turn around. And some people never do. They never do repent. Because they won't give the money back that they stole. They'll overlook it. They'll act like they didn't do it. That they didn't repent. Lift your hands and say, I truly repent. If you feel tears and you feel emotional and you get touched by God and you're, you're tired, that's good. Let the Lord convict you. John 16 says conviction. Conviction is for the people. Not just for the world, but for the church. If God can't convict you and have you to cleanse your temple and your life, then what are we really doing anyway? What gospel are we preaching? What gospel are we living what life are we living? Are we a true disciple if we can't be corrected? Now lift your hands and say, Lord, everything I'm supposed to do that I haven't done yet. Say it. Lord, everything. Father, in Jesus' name, everything that I am supposed to do that I did not do yet. Please forgive me for not doing it yet, but help me and anoint me now to do it from today. In Jesus' name. I feel like water coming off the platform here. Like cool water, like a waterfall. I feel the anointing. Clap your hands. Go ahead. Praise him. Praise him. It's okay. I feel like shh. That prayer will just refresh your life. I long for the days. I was talking with a, another prophetess, a prophetess last night. People look at each other in ministry as competitors. I break that spirit in Jesus' name in the city. I break it in the church. I curse it in Jesus' name. And anybody that wants to be a, 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 a blocker, a hater, a manipulator, an opponent, uh, it's not going to be good for them. What God does to spiritual opponents is not good. They will not stand. Let me give you a scripture. Isaiah 41.11. Just make a note of this. Isaiah 41.11 says, Those that hate you or are incensed against you, King James said, he said, they will be ashamed and disgraced. You'll look for them and not find them because they'll become as nothing. They'll disappear. They'll go into obscurity because they oppose the good man. They oppose the good woman. And then it says, if, you, if they continue to strive with you or fight you, they'll perish. Perish means two things. It either means to drop down 
And a second, or it means to slowly waste away and deteriorate and rot. Either one, however, God. But all of that's not good. Lift your hands and say, I will never be in that equation. Prophesy to yourself, I will never be there. Whatever they did, it was horrible. They hurt me, they hurt you, they hurt people. Yeah, but you got to forgive and forget. There's a word in the Bible. Manasseh, M-A-N-A-S-S-E-H. Manasseh. It's a prophetic name. It means, Manasseh, from the Bible, means the Lord. In Hebrew, it means the Lord made me to forget my trouble. And the Bible says, I'll have double for my trouble. Isaiah 61, 7. For your shame, you'll have double. The double portion of blessing will be yours. Hallelujah. We forgive. Let me tell you about forgiveness. Forgiveness is a gift. That you give to yourself. When you forgive, you release yourself from the evildoer. But it does not absolve the evildoer from their guilt. They're still going to pay for what they did. That's their own problem. In fact, you should pray it gets accelerated. That they be exposed and ashamed and they can't hurt anybody else. Dietrich Bonhoeffer. I can't remember his last name, how you say it, in, uh, in Hitler's day, in uh, World War II in Germany. He made a, he was kind of a, he was a Christian guy, and he took a lot of persecution for his stand. But he said, and Albert Einstein also said this, the great brilliant thinker, he said, the world doesn't just get messed up by evildoers, it gets messed up by the good people not doing anything about it. We're to be standard bearers, to stand in the gap. Say amen, lift your hands. Say, Lord, ordain and use me and take all fear of men out of me. Take all fear out of me. Don't ever worry too much about what people think because they don't think about you enough and maybe they don't even think that well of you either. Think well about yourself. Think on things that are lovely. He, uh, Philippians 4.8. Things that are lovely, just honest, uh, virtuous and full of praise. Think on these things. Be filled with the Spirit. Singing unto yourself, making merry, me melody in your heart unto the Lord in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. I want to prophesy to leaders. I was talking about this prophetess. We were having a conversation last night. And, you know, they have their ministry. I have my ministry. Others have their ministry. And y'all look at each other as others, you know. And sh they came over to see me. It was really an amazing thing. The chair next to me got anointed. When anybody sat there, the anointing came over them. And they were like, Phew. I didn't do anything. I wasn't even praying. They said, when I sat down here, I said, you mean right now, right here? Or was it another time? No, right now. I just felt it come upon my head. And I, and I was conscious. The mantle of God is upon me. It goes beyond my physical body. When you come into the arena, the area, the radar, the place of my, my space, you get touched. Lift your hands. We need to protect that. Remember the, the Bible says, Guard your heart. Guard your life. Out of it flow the issues of life. Adam sinned when he stopped guarding the garden. That's when the serpent came in. The Bible says the Garden of Eden, God put a garden eastward in Eden. It was a certain place in the east side of Eden. Eden was a whole place. Adam probably got bored and he stepped away and he got maybe outside. And then Eve was there alone and the serpent said, now I can get the woman. And deceived her and she deceived the man and the whole human race fell because the garden was left unprotected lift your hands your life is a garden a garden of Eden you need to protect it so she started to talk a few things and I said why are we all disjointed I'm prophesying do you, do you understand I'm prophesying do you understand I'm prophesying why are we all disjointed? Why is a brother supposed to be a brother a competitor? Why is he another? A and other. His initials might as well be A dot N dot other. Another. Brother A, middle initial N, other. Why are they another? It's time for the people to come together because when there's unity, God says, I command my blessing. Now the two scriptures quickly. Uh, uh, thank you, Lord. Psalm 102, verse 18 to uh, 
22. Make a note of that. He looked down from the height of his sanctuary from heaven. The Lord viewed the earth to hear the groaning of the prisoner, the people, to release those who were appointed to death. I never saw so many people dying all the time like Kenya. Every other day there's a burial. People shouldn't die that young. Say amen, somebody. I'm prophesying. People should live long. Everybody should live into their 90s at least. Hello? Hello. To declare the name of the Lord in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem. When the people gathered together in the kingdoms to serve the Lord. That's what needs to happen. Now, going down here, there was some kind of judgment that was talking about a problem that they were having. But I like the principle right here. I want to stop right there at 22. 18 to 22 of Psalm 102. Make a note of that. When we come together, I want to serve him. He's not going to come to weaken us. He's going to come to strengthen us. Go to, uh, let's look at uh, Jeremiah 16, verse uh, 14. It says, Therefore, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that it will no more be said, the Lord lives, who brought up the children of Israel from the land of Egypt, but the Lord lives, who brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands where they had been driven. For now I will bring them back into their own land because I established it as a, as a covenant to the fathers. Lift your hands right now. You need to have your own land. Now I'm taking this in. It's got a context here for Israel. But you can take something in the scripture and take it as a personal promise to you. One more thing. Let me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop the mic in a, in a, in a minute or two. I'm, I, I'm conscious of time. I understand. But uh, the Lord said in 3 John 2 to the well-beloved Gaius. Do you know anybody named Gaius? I finally met one in Nigeria. Nigerians are great because they love the Bible. And the mama named the child Gaius because she liked the verse. Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So years ago, I found an empty space, a gap in the, in the, between the verses. And I said, this is white space is meaningful. So I wrote my name, Thomas Manton IV. To the well-beloved Thomas Manton IV, I wish, pray, and desire. King James says wish. New King James says pray. New International Version says desire. I wish, pray, and desire above everything else that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. Let me tell you, that's a covenant to me. If you find your Bible again when you have time, look up 3 John, the epistle of 3 John. Not the gospel of John, but the epistle before Revelation, the little book there. 3 John, it's only one chapter. Uh, 3 John, it's only one little chapter. The second verse, and write your name in there. And say, I am the well-beloved of God. So God wants me, someone say, God wants me to prosper and be in great health even as my soul prospers. Now here comes the devil. He wants to mess up your money life. He wants to mess up your friendship life. He wants to mess up your relationships. He wants to mess up your health. He wants to mess up your peace of mind. But I say, every devil is a liar and is being cast out in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the living God, for whom I live and whom I serve. This is all prophetic. I said it down in the office. Health. Lift your hands. Say, I'm healed. I'm being healed. I don't have time to have a healing service. We'll do it in another time when we just call out words of knowledge. People get healed instantly. It happens all the time. God's used me in that all over the world. But I pray right now one prayer. One prayer. Lift your hands to me. Lift your hands to the, to the altar here, to the platform. The anointing is here. The Holy Ghost is here. Himself. I pray you're healed. I pray you'll begin to prosper from today, from this hour. On uh, this day of March 24th, 2024. 24, 3, 24. 3, 24, 24. 2-0 means something. 2, 2 Chronicles 20. 20, believe the prophet, so shall you prosper. 20, 24, what a power of numbers. But the Lord says now, I'm going to heal you, I'm going to bless you, and I'm going to begin to remove stress from your life. Unnecessary stress has to go. Where you're disappointed it means there's a disconnection, a disruption in the flow of heaven. When you're discouraged, when you're in despair, when you're depressed, 
when you feel dejected and distracted and disillusioned in any way, dejected, derailed, denied, delayed, there's something blocking the flow. And you need to see what that is and deal with it from today. Someone's irritating you, irritating you, irritating you. They're, they're, they're misplaced. They may be a good person, but you need to, they don't need to be there. They need to be there. Your space has to be the place of grace. I marvel, and I've been in the zone with Benny Hinn in meetings in America many times. He prophesied. He called me out, prophesied over me in the platform. Of course, I flew through the air like, you know, whew. catch me. I don't want to get to Tanzania. And he has a space there where he doesn't let any distraction come. It's a glory. It's a place of glory. He, he does that. Even the Israelites, they put an empty chair like they thought Elijah might come to visit. Other people put a chair. Paul Yonggi Cho, who's David Yonggi Cho, the, the, the founder at that time, back in the 80s, the biggest church in the world, over a million members in Seoul, Korea, he had an empty chair that nobody could sit. His protocols, if you try to go near that chair, you were in trouble. And they asked him, what's that chair? He said, that chair is for the, he said with his accent, the Holy Spirit. For the Holy Spirit. Lift your hands. Does he have a place where you are? So I feel prophetically. And it's a divine connection here, my pastor. I love you. I feel your spirit. I don't feel this great everywhere. I feel like we need to be friends. I'm tired of churches that just, it's like a prostitution ring. Come and bless me. Do a meeting. We're going to try to steal the anointing. Take a blessing. And afterwards, they don't want to talk. They don't want to be friends. What's up with that? Why can't we be brothers? Hello? And build something for the work of God. I prophesy, regardless of who does it or doesn't, I see thousands of other leaders coming together. And we're going to arrange events like this. Where the Holy Ghost is going to come and touch them. Knock them down on the floor. Give them visitations. They'll get up like another man. Even Saul, who was wicked, was turned into another man under the prophetic grace. When it manifests, when God manifests that strong, that strongly is when people get anointed. And that's what's going to happen in our day. Lift your hands. Harasha. I am not done, but I'm going to hit the pause button. Be looking for the book coming out soon. The prophecies of, uh, for Kenya, the political ones, the national ones are all going to be in one book. And all these other books. And today I have this. Come and see me at the table. And I'll write a special prayer for you in a scripture and sign it for you and pray over you for your love gift. And when you do, I consider it a seed. It's not like you're buying anything. You know, you buy the truth. I don't sell it. Hello? I give it freely. It took me a lot to write this book. People have said that. They look through it. They say, oh, major bishops have read this and said, prophet, you really worked to make this book. Lift your hands. Karabosha. Can I do something crazy? Everybody that wants the touch of the Holy Ghost in your life, come to the altar real quick and stand here. Just come stand here. You want the touch of the Holy Ghost. Come. I'm not going to lay hands on people. I'm not going to take time. I just want you to make a, a, a walk. I want you to walk. Like I was talking about, get out from your life where you're stuck and just take a step forward. Stand up and come here right now. Come here right now. Just fill the altar right now. Take a walk toward the anointing. Take a walk. I'm not laying hands on anybody. I don't have time. I got, I'm, I'm finished. We're just in this one service. I'm wrapping it here. Come, come, come. Some of you are walking so slow like this. That ghetto life, that poverty life really messed you up. You can't even run. You can't even. You got to get full of zeal. The Z, this is an A to Z book on success. The last word in the book I, I did z for zeal the zeal of thine house has consumed me the more on fire you get the more heaven can touch you the quicker you are to respond to his voice the quicker things can happen for you just lift your hands right now i see fear in people i see people that are you you've been bewitched by people i i, I declare every word spoken over you by any 
quote unquote pastor, any quote unquote family member, any evil person, any person oppressing you in any way. I break it from your life. You're free. You're free from this altar. This is an altar of holiness. This is an altar of the habitation of the Holy Ghost. You're free to walk. You're free to do tomorrow and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Sunday and onward. What you need to do for God. When he speaks to you, you can step out and begin to do it and see it happen. A little softer on the music. Just a little softer. Pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Come up here with that. Come up here with it. Come up here. Come around. Come around this way. Thank you, Lord. Days of refreshing. Times in his presence. That's what we need. That's what we need. That's what we need. I prophesy for the next 30 days. In this church, the presence will be tangible here. I prophesy that unusual miracles will happen here for the next 30 days. From now until the third week of April, for the next 30 days, I release an anointing in this place that new things will begin to be birthed. Uh, new projects in the apostle will begin to come alive in his heart and his wife and the other people. New dreams, new plans, new departments, new operations, new administrations, and they will move in excellence, will be birthed here in the next 30 days. I prophesy. Oh, yes. Well, I didn't have this before, but the Holy Ghost just said it right now. A place of his visitation. I was in Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, preaching. Wednesday night, they only had about 30 people ever come to the service. When I came, 500 people showed up. The place was packed out. They had 30 people Wednesday night service. 30 people. When they announced I was there, 500 people showed up, filled the place. And the Lord had me promised, I said, for the next 14 days, the presence of heaven will be in this place. I didn't know that on the 14th day started their international annual conference. I didn't know that. And the next morning we went for prayer. Six in the morning, the pastor came zealously to get me at my hotel, woke me up. He said, get dressed, we're going to go pray. I said, okay. We'll go to the prayer. When we walked into the sanctuary, the tangible glory of God was there. And it stayed like that to the beginning of the conference. I'm talking about signs and wonders. We're called for wonders. We're called for signs. We're called to carry, manifest the presence of God. And when the Holy Ghost is, is tangibly manifest somewhere, there's nothing impossible. There's nothing impossible. Lift your hands. Every miracle you need financially, what you need in your life, God is going to arrange for the funds to come to you. Whatever job you need, many jobless people, I prophesy and I declare against unemployment. Look for work. You're a good person. You're willing to work and you're, you're starving because you can't find a job and no one even helps you anymore. You know, the, it's true what the Bible said in Proverbs that the rich man has many friends, but the poor man, even his neighbor hates him. And in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 16, there's a story of a man that had wisdom from brilliant strategy, from his brilliance, from God to even deliver a city. But no one regarded his words because he was a poor man. Poverty is not your friend, it's your enemy. And God wants to break that curse. It's a curse, it's a curse. Poverty is the offspring of the father Satan and the mother sin. Satan and sin come together and release impoverishedness and despair and death and affliction and disease and horrible living conditions. But that was never the plan of God for you. The three large, two of the three largest slums in the world, two of them are in Nairobi, Kenya, Kibera and Mathare. God said it ought not to be. And people sickly, demon, demonic people, even make money from those places. They go around harassing people for the little place they have that doesn't even have a toilet to run correctly. Banging on the door, give me this money or we'll throw you out or we'll kill you. You think you need to live like that? God said, I'll lay your foundations with precious stones. I'm sharing a lot, but I want to put a lot into this. Isaiah 54, 11. 
You tossed with tempests who mourn and moan and are not comforted. Behold, I'll lay your foundations with precious stones. And your, your, your walls will be of a gate, which is a stone that has a beautiful pattern, a colored crystal. I'll make you to live in palaces. Lift your hands. Palaces are not just for the corrupt and the business people that figured it out or government people that, that take money. Palaces are for the children of God. I prophesy, Pastor Lawrence, God's going to give you a new residence. I see you coming into property and land. I see you building new buildings. I see you building a house for yourself. I see construction. I see the work. Oh, yeah. I see the workers there right now, digging and building. God says you're going to build your own place. God says it seems impossible somehow in natural ways, but God says I'll make it happen as a reward for you, my servant. People will help with that. People will give. People will come and give you things that you can do it. I declare it so. And as I say to him, so it comes back to me. You know, when I point my finger like this, sister, I got three pointing back at me. Every good blessing I speak over another. I'm conscious of this and I prophesy to over thousands of leaders and churches around the world. I have spoken physically to millions of people in crusades and outdoor meetings and church services and conferences and online internet. I'm conscious that every word I speak of blessing to another, I'm sowing a seed with the words that will also germinate for us. Isaiah 119 says, if you're willing and obedient, and I, God knows I am, more so than ever. Always increasing in that more and more. Now we'll eat the good of the land. If you're righteous, you need to eat the good of the land. Lift your hands. Anybody without a job, I don't have time to have a call for hands. Anybody that's sick, you're healed today. Anybody that's jobless, get ready to be, find your employment. Anybody that has a business dream and a business idea. I saw downstairs prophetically in the office a, a business department coming alive for entrepreneurs to be prayed over and blessed in this place, in this church. And you'll go into the marketplace and prosper. Bring your tithes back to the altar. If you feel you want a partner and sow a seed into my grace, you can do it. You can find me. Again, thomasmanton.com, my website, has all our details. Praise the Lord. And make sure you get our newsletter. I would love to be feeding you the word. That's my life. Feeding you with the anointing. How many believe Nairobi is going to be a place of great habitation? Let me end this with the mega drop. Nairobi, Kenya, the Lord spoke to me, will become the New York City of Africa. This is a ha ha ha. This is a great city. Like New York City rose to be a great cap, a business capital with skyscrapers. And uh, now they've gone a bit crazy politically. They've gone, they've lost their minds. Uh, it's unfortunate, but, uh, but the city is still there. But as it became a great place, even the shift of the UN, the United Nations, as things are going to increase here more with the United Nations. And it's been prophesied that uh, the UN will actually leave America. They have their center there in New York, but it's not permanent. God's going to shift things. But whatever happens here, this is going to be a commerce center. In 2002, I'm not just telling you something that I heard last night or last week. Right here. December 13, 2002, God spoke and said, I want Nairobi to be a cosmopolitan world-class city and at the time it was not yes or yes i'm not giving you the chance to say no because it was bad streets full of holes street people no trees no development kenyatta avenue wow when they first put the traffic lights you people didn't know what to do hello now look super highway Think of superhighway. Look now, the expressway. Look now, the SGR train lines. All this, God had this boy right here prophesied 20 years ago. Seven, 16, 17, 18, 20 years ago, when there was nothing. Had two ladies standing in the street outside the Stanley Hotel. They were standing in the middle of the road. I said, dear, please, the buses are coming. Please stand on the sidewalk. They're standing in the road outside, you know, like. They said, ah, nah, Nairobi. 
two Kikuyu ladies. Nilobi, it's beautiful, it's changed, prophet. When you first said this, we didn't know what to think. Even Harrison Nanga, the archbishop, he said on video, we have the video, you'll see it on my YouTube channel. On my YouTube channel. He said, the prophet was speaking about expressways and superhighways and we wondered, is he okay? What is he seeing when we saw nothing but trouble? Lift your hands. Your apostle said it too, right? When there was chaos, people didn't know which way it was going to go. God spoke a definitive word from a man that wasn't even here. Because I wasn't polluted by any tribal thing or political persuasion. I don't care about that. I just hear, thus saith the Lord, and speak what he says. And surely it came to pass. And then Bishop Harrison said, now we see the expressway. Right outside his church on uh, Uhuru Highway, Banyala over there, Banyala Road. You look outside, you see the expressway has come right above his building. He says, now look, what I'm saying also is going to happen. The presence of the Lord is going to come. God's going to unify people together. He's breaking corruption. He's breaking devils that have stood in the way of progress. He's taking every blessing blocker out of your way. He's removing every distraction. From today, the floodgates are open. New things are going to happen. And you better get ready in your business life because so many millions of people will be coming to Kenya. What business can you do to help them? What tour company can you birth? What hotel can you get? Hello. What service can you provide? What online system can you build? It's, the sky's the limit. Actually, the sky's not even the limit. We can go right to heaven. Boldly before the throne of grace. Past the sky. And pull everything down. Jesus said the master prayer. With well, this, I close. The master prayer was, Lord, Father, let it be done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven, everything's perfect. And that's the way it is. It's going to be for you. Poverty, fear, destruction, lack, stress, sadness, private tears, the pain you've had. God saw it all. And I see it prophetically in the spirit as his prophet. The things you told nobody about. The things even myself that we go through, that we tell nobody about. It's so deep. It's so painful. Horrific warfare. Horrific persecution. Horrific attacks. God is above it all. And the victory is ours. Lift your hands and close your eyes. Shakarate. Every evildoer that's been in your way is getting cut down. And everything that the Lord has ordained is being activated and invoked upon you from this altar right here, this very hour, this very day. I'm Thomas Manton IV. I love you. I'm not done, but I'll pause here. We'll hit the pause. We'll hit the play button next time. The Lord bless you. Stretch your hands out toward me. And say, Lord, I make a demand and a pull on the grace that's upon your servant. And I, I command the blessing to come to my house. Father, have mercy on me. Find me. Bless me. Fix me. Heal me. Have people honor me. Let me tell you something. The grace you honor is the grace you activate. The anointing that you honor is the anointing that you receive from. An offering is going to be received. I command everybody, get the most generous gift you can and sow it into this grace. Everything you sow today, God will multiply back to you within a very short time. You're investing in something. You're spinning something into motion by sowing into this anointing today. The anointing you respect is the anointing you attract. The grace that you, not just that you know about or see, but the anointing that you honor is the anointing that you receive from when you honor it. Show honor. Show honor in every way. Five things we need to honor. God, His Word, His anointing, His Spirit, and His servant. And we can never go wrong. We can never lack. Lift your hands. I feel the anointing here. It's like fire. I'm sweating here. It's like fire is up here. Koshalaha. Father, breathe upon your people. <sighs> Let a fresh touch of your fire be released upon them. And I speak this out over the airwaves to you watching. Let the visitation of God hit you. Let you. I pray you'll have a 2 Chronicles 5.13 experience where God's glory come so strong in your midst and acts 319 the refreshing comes from the presence of the lord 
that you don't know what to do. And that's when God will begin to move and give you the miraculous. The miraculous and miracles flow by the anointing. When the anointing is not there, no miracle can happen. I pray you're blessed. Third John 2, I speak it over you. Beloved, you, I pray that you'll prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers in Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Manton the fourth. Visit the website thomasmanton.com. We'll see you there. I'll see you next time. I love you. Blow me a kiss. Can I have one? Can you blow me a kiss? You're so shy. I blow you one back. Come on, give me a good one. Someone turn around and give me a good one. I got to feel the love here. Thank you. Thank you. The Lord bless you. Thank you, Alpha and Omega. Bright and morning star. Ferris of 10,000. Lily of the Valley, Rose of Sharon. Amen, faithful and true. Bishop and overseer of our souls. The bread of life, the great shepherd, the door of the sheep. The amen, faithful and true. The everlasting father, the prince of peace, the mighty God. The soon and coming king. The victorious rider on the horse that's coming back for the church. We thank you, Lord, that you are Lord and beside you. There's no other. You are the Alpha and the Omega. And what you've begun in us, perform it, perfect it in Jesus' name. I pray the blessing of God upon the righteous and the conviction and the judgment upon the wicked. Let the division happen now that the wicked will be cut down, but the righteous will be exalted because things are changing. And the day of revival has come to Kenya, the heavens have been opened, a new season has begun. And don't speak evil about anybody, just prophesy, declare what you want, but you build your house. And as you serve the Lord and honor him, he'll bless you in Jesus' name. Let's receive our great apostle as he comes. I love you so much. With holy nothing, with holy nothing, I surrender all, I surrender all to you, everything I give to you, with holding nothing, with holding nothing, holding nothing, with holding nothing, say I surrender. Dear brethren, in Psalms 119-105, the Bible says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Truly, God has sent prophet Dr. Thomas Manton IV to proclaim and declare his word of abundance and prosperity prophetically unto the nations. Thus, brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you, just as the Bible says in Matthew 10:41, whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet, will receive a prophet reward. Let us welcome and embrace the prophet of God by supporting his ministry. You can sow a seed, you can send your love offering, you can support or partner in the ministry program using the details displayed on your screen. For when the prophet of God decrees a blessing upon you, indeed, you shall be blessed.